Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Vulcan, and today we are taking an exclusive sneak peek at Thea, the Oracle from Torchlight Infinite. Now, I'd like to thank Torchlight Infinite and XD Games for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate them allowing me to take a look at this character and share it with you guys a little bit ahead of time. So Thea is the sixth hero added to the game, and while she might seem like just another caster, she's actually incredibly versatile. She can utilize some close range attacks, some medium range spells, and her unique hero trait adds a new wrinkle for players to take advantage of. Now in this video, we're gonna break down what makes Thea unique and some different ways that you can build her. So to get started, let's check out her trait. So the other heroes have some straightforward traits. You have the Berserker's Rage, you have the Time Witness Illusion, and you have Gemma's Frostfire Meter. Thea's is a little bit more intricate. So Thea will gain a Divine Blessing every two seconds, which grants three buffs in a repeating manner. You gain Focus, Agility, and Tenacity Blessings. Now, if you spent any time in the talent trees or playing Torchlight Infinite, you know there are some cool buffs you can take advantage of whenever these are active. So just as a quick refresher, if you're out of the loop, Focus Blessing will give you a chance to deal double damage. Agility Blessing will increase movement, cast, and attack speed, and Tenacity Blessing will give additional damage reduction. So combining all of these things together gives you some really big damage and survivability buffs, and each one can stack up to four times. But the cool thing is, that's not the only thing that Thea brings to the table. Thea can also use her hero trait to activate a special skill called Divine Punishment. This is going to consume all of those blessings and deal spell physical damage in a very large AOE. And depending on what was consumed, the spell will also gain additional benefits. First, Thea is going to gain a damage buff for each stack of blessings consumed. And then focus blessings are going to increase the radius of divine punishment. Agility blessings are going to increase the cooldown recovery speed of divine punishment. And tenacity blessing will give a big damage boost to the next skill cast after it was consumed. So as you can see, Thea has some really strong bonuses that she can take advantage of. And since they don't have any specific requirements, almost any skill or build can use them to supercharge their damage. Now, speaking of, let's take a look at one of my favorite builds for Thea. It's a Frost Strike build. So this one reminds me a lot of a monk. It's incredibly mobile, it has high attack speed, it has some really nice supporting skills that'll further increase your damage and provide extra clear speed. Now, this build isn't necessarily going to just delete bosses off the map, but it does do a really good job at clearing the map and filling up your Dark Surge meter fast. Now, the core of this build is the Frost Spike skill. This is a close range frost melee attack, and once you use it and it hits an enemy in front of you, it's gonna splinter off into smaller fragments, and these are going to deal extra AoE damage. So it creates this sort of nice mix of single target and AoE that'll help you clear through things faster. Now, in terms of your supporting skills, these are going to further improve your cold damage. But the main thing that I really like is the addition of the shadows to this skill. These are like shadow clones, and they not only improve the damage, but they also improve the range of the skill to make it much, much more effective. Now with Frost Spike as the core skill you're gonna be using pretty much the entire time, it's your bread and butter of this build. This setup also uses Life Source as your heal, Spiral Strike for movement, Bloodthirst for extra damage output, and Ice Bond to further increase the damage of Frost Spike, while also dealing a little bit of damage itself. Now, in terms of your passives, this is gonna give us additional cold damage, and we also have a cast on critical strike skill that's gonna apply curses and cast blizzard whenever we deal a critical. So this build has tons of synergy, and it really shines when you have larger groups of enemies you need to clear out, and as you can see, there's a heavy focus on cold damage. Now, if this build isn't something you're interested in, the official Twitter for Torchlight Infinite has also shown off some really cool builds for Thea. Things like using a Wilt Beam, which erodes enemies into nothingness, or the Flame Pillar Sentry. So if you like a totem style build, the Flame Pillar is a great skill to look at. So all in all, this not only speaks to the flexibility that Thea has and what she can accomplish, but also to the skill system of Torchlight Infinite. Heroes truly are just a template, and you can build them however you want to. If you want to take Gemma, who's primarily a caster, and put her into melee range with some attacks, you can. 
If you want to take the Berserker and instead make him a ranged powerhouse, you can do that as well. There's a lot you can do. So the real message here is just find something that truly fits you. And that's a great transition because now that we've covered Thea and what she can accomplish, let's talk about what type of player should consider picking Thea up. So if you're someone who likes to play a caster, an elemental rogue, sort of like a battle mage, or maybe an aura build, then Thea might be right up your alley. Her hero traits play right into fast attack speed, boosting damage, and giving some extra oomph to spell-based close range attacks like Frost Spike or even Frost Impact. But if you're someone who does like to play Berserker, like a Whirlwind style build, a long range caster, maybe you want to channel some beams, or even a gunslinger where you like to drop rains of arrows or bullets onto enemies, I wouldn't recommend Thea. She might be able to make that work, but she isn't the best hero for the job. And this just plays right back into the notion that all your heroes are templates. Each one's going to start with a different skill. They're going to unlock skills in a different order, and you need to choose the one that sort of best fits you. And that wraps this video up, folks. That is Thea, the latest hero for Torchlight Infinite, and one that I think lots of you will enjoy playing. I'm really looking forward to all of the cool builds that you guys come up with because while I can go out and create something that works for me, it's just insane the level of creativity that everybody in the community has sometimes. It's awesome going through and looking at different ways that you can approach skills or maybe thinking about a different skill or a different support skill differently that enables a different play style. So I love it. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. But if you want to learn more about Torchlight Infinite, check out the links in the description below, including where you can download and play the game starting October 12th. So thank you everybody for watching. If you like Torchlight Infinite, please consider liking and subscribing. I'll have some more content coming over the next few weeks. And as always, this has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys next time.